Hi guys and welcome back, welcome back to the channel. My name is Neji Ngobo and if this is the first time you're seeing my face, my face, my face, and you love the content, please do take the time to hit the subscribe button and join my YouTube family. Today we are still in the process of getting our mindset together for 2024. And this week, I am going to be discussing with you what is in and what is out for myself for the year 2024, things I want to leave in the past and things I want to continue doing or start doing in 2024. I hope this video is helpful and gives you some brilliant ideas and you enjoy every second of it. And if you do, please comment down below what you'll be taking into 2024. Don't comment what you are leaving out because we've left it out, haven't we? right anywho i'm gonna open this bottle of sparkling wine just because this is a good moment like i really feel good about the things i have chosen to leave behind and the things i've chosen to take into the future <laughs> but also like no cap i have just been enjoying mcc like not just like sparkling wines and, and mccs i've been enjoying lately not just because of um, celebratory celebratory moments, but just I've been enjoying the taste and yeah, the fizziness of it all. I don't know why. This is a KWV Demi Sec um, sparkling wine available at most places where you buy alcohol, you know, checkers, liquor stores, blah de blah. Okay, moment, a moment of silence, please. It's always so emotional. You're always so scared. You're always so scared to hit stuff. Okay, let me try. I'm twisting and pulling up at the same time. Ah! Ah! Ugh. When is a man when you need him? These are the moments where you need a man in your life. Yeah! Let's leave singleness in 2023, please. Okay. Almost there. Almost there. You see? It's moved like an inch. Because you need a man for these moments, for real. Okay, let me pour this and then we can chat. There's not much to do When all I can Is thinking about you Not doing well So nice. So I have written these down and I'm going to start How official am I with my pen? I've written these down and I'm going to start with what's out for me in 2024, what I want to leave in the past and the habits that I want to stop doing. I haven't numbered them. I haven't numbered them. So I don't know how many points in each. It's not like really equal, equal. Funny that I said I am leaving singleness in 2023. What is also out for me this is ironic, but what is also out for me in 2024 is actively looking for a boyfriend. I have deleted that dating app and I am letting God and the universe and divine timing take the wheel. So I am relieving myself of the duty of finding myself a man and I'm just leaving it to God's perfect timing. And I think that's the best way. What's also out is me not feeling ready for the next step. I think a lot of the time when it comes to my career and my money mindset, I feel that I can't jump from this point to that point. And I think that I've seen it in my life with so many people where they have, in inverted commas, jumped steps, where God's, God's blessings feel more than what you were ready for and I think that I must up my ask when it comes to God and not be afraid of it and I think this also links into generally me having a scarcity mindset and a mindset of things like that don't happen to people like me I don't know if you guys experience going through that as well like you will have your ideal life in your mind your ideal income your ideal car your ideal man your ideal home in your head but somewhere somehow you know that deep down in your subconscious you have 
a scarcity mindset and you pray for that, but your belief is not matching what you're praying for. Your belief is not matching what you're working towards. And I want to just let go of that, especially when it comes to my career, especially when it comes to my dating life, you know, like don't sell yourself short, like aim for the stars and maybe land on the clouds kind of vibe. That's my vibe when it comes to 2024. So I'm leaving scarcity mindset behind and not feeling ready for the next step. So if God says I'm ready, that means I'm ready. End of story. If God brings it into my life, then that means I'm ready. I'm not going to doubt myself. I'm not going to second guess myself. So self-doubt, limited beliefs, out. I think it's funny that as I'm going through this out, it's also highlighting my ins because the ins are almost an opposite. Am I making sense of the outs? Okay. But what is definitely out, believe it or not, I know I'm drinking alcohol right now, but what's definitely out is me centering alcohol in my life. Let me elaborate. Get to an age and a place where you're living alone, you have enough budget to buy alcohol whenever you want, and you have enough budget to go out, I would say, frequently. And then you start to understand that your drinking habits are not healthy for you mentally, physically, and in, and in terms of just being overall productive, I feel I need to decenter the purchase and the drinking of alcohol in general in my life. Um, there was a point where every Friday, without a shadow of a doubt, I would be walking into a liquor store just to de-stress from the week. And I feel that I'm at a point in my life where that needs to stop. Tell me if you can relate. When you're a working person, you just feel like you need that glass of wine. You need that savannah. You need that after work sundowners vibe in your life. And I think that I need to cut down for my health because it is part of the unnecessary calories that I am accumulating as well as for my productivity. If I drink on a Friday, then it means I wake up later on a Saturday. It means that things I could have done on a Saturday morning, like gone for a run, edit or shoot a video, I am delaying into the late afternoon. And that is just ridiculous. Like alcohol doesn't have to be this big of a part of my life. So I'm going to cut down for my health and my productivity. The next one is spending too much money on Uber Eats. I feel like definitely last year with load shedding and my work schedule, I spent way too much money on Uber Eats. Number one, it's not healthy. Number two, I could have used that money for other things. If you think about it, on average, if I'm spending money on Uber Eats, on average, a meal is a hundred, a hundred to 150 rand. Literally, I could have spent that money on better things. And I could have made a healthy meal at home. I think especially when load shedding happens between the hours of 6 to 8 p.m. And that's my cooking time usually. At 6, I'll be ready to take a shower and start making my evening meal. And when load shedding happens at that time, it just deflates me. And then I end up going onto the app, going onto the Uber app and ordering McDonald's or KFC or pizza and it's not healthy and it wastes money so i'm going to focus on buying things that can make quick meals so making sure that i have things to make sandwiches and salads in the fridge which is a meal that doesn't need electricity and is still substantially more healthy than an uber eats meal like if i make a tomato cheese and ham sandwich or if i make a salad with like tuna and some I don't know, cucumber, cherry tomatoes, feta, like I need to buy those kind of things to make sure that I can make a quick meal and don't worry about load shedding. And the other thing that I've thought of that will combat the load shedding vibe is actually making some soups. So if the load shedding comes back and eight, I can defrost the soup, warm it up and I have a meal. I need to just have some self-control here. And then... um. My last point in the outs is worrying about what people think. I think it's been holding me back 
and I haven't been expressing my opinions as much my I haven't been expressing my thoughts and my opinions as much as I could be, especially when I look at my social media, which is the ones that I'm focusing on, TikTok and YouTube. And because of this, I am actually going to start doing more speaking videos on TikTok. I feel I've been doing on TikTok, if you've seen it, the handle is at Snatching Mobile. If you've seen it on TikTok, I've literally been doing hair videos with a trending sound at the background or makeup videos with a trending sound in the background and I feel that I have thoughts and opinions that people might enjoy listening to so censoring myself and caring what people think is one of the things that I feel has been holding me back from actually speaking on the TikTok platform so that is out of the window so with that I am done with my outs for 2024 and let me share my ins with you definitely in for 2024 for me is more prayer and more meditation i feel that sometimes you have a tendency especially me don't know about you you can talk for yourself um sometimes we have the tendency of forgetting to pray and forgetting to thank god when things are going well and i'm definitely guilty of that so i am going to schedule more time to speak to god even when things are going well Another thing that's in is appreciating my health. I think we really, most of us take for granted being able-bodied and having um, and having the physical capacity to exercise and having the physical capacity to take care of yourself. Some people, young and old, actually can't go outdoors for a run. Some people actually can't get themselves without any help into a bathtub, into a shower. So in my self-care and in my health journey, I feel like I'm going to acknowledge more the fact that I am healthy and I am capable and me not feeling like doing exercise is just be, it's just being ignorant of the blessing that it actually is. And that's all I'm going to say on that. And you better take what you can take from that. If you are able-bodied and you are able to exercise, the more you can do it, the more prolonged your health will be. Like we're all living to die, that I know. But we can do our part in order to live a more wholesome, healthy life while we have our health and our physical capacity to do so. What is definitely in for 2024 is solo dates. You would have seen in last year's videos towards the end that I have been loving solo dates. I think I'm gaining more confidence in being outdoors on my own. It's good for my mental health. It's good for my content because I actually get to create content while being outside on my own. But more than that, I think just a time to zen out and not be in the house. I think I need to let go of this perception that I live alone and I need companions in order to go out. Like if none of my friends are free and I don't have a boyfriend or anyone who wants to take me out on a date, it means that I can't go out. I love being outdoors. I love dressing up. I love having a good meal and a glass of wine. And I think also the thing that we don't realize about solo dates is that the budget is up to you. No one can tell you how much to spend on a solo date. There's absolutely no pressure. Like, for example, you could go out for waffles. And that is like maybe um, if you go out for waffles and a coffee, somewhere cheap. You could literally pay a hundred rand for waffles and a coffee, depending on where you go, obviously. Or you could just have sushi or breakfast whatever it is the budget is up to you or if you can afford it it can be a high class dinner white table cloth the best wine depending on what your budget is but i think that like those are the benefits of solo dating number one you decide where to go what's the budget and how long you're going out for number two mental health being outdoors if you live alone seeing people is a thing if you live alone and everybody around you is dating, seeing people is a thing. And also, who knows, you could meet someone out there. But really, that's not my focus right now. As I've said, literally, I'll be doing it for my mental health as well as content. The next in for me is definitely time management. Wow, I am sometimes a 
atrocious at managing time. I feel like I could be more productive at work. I could be more productive with content creation. I could be more productive with the state of my flat, just being clean, with making food, healthy food, if I manage my time better. So I'm going to start managing my time better. Sometimes I'll get home and I'll just be on TikTok for an hour. And I'm literally like, Snare, you could have exercised and taken a shower in an hour. Like if I do a 30 minute exercise video, then get into a shower. I'm done for the evening. Then I can sit down and scroll. Then I can put on a YouTube video. Then I can watch a series. But like I will spend an hour. Let's say I'll get home at like half past four to five. Then I'll spend an hour scrolling and then I'm only exercising at six, bathing at seven, eating at eight, where all of that process could have happened an hour earlier. So my time management needs to be top priority. That's an end for me in 2024. Um, the next thing is saving, saving, saving. I heard I was just by the way, this video is inspired by Miss XO. She's the South African YouTuber that I saw doing this first, but I'm sure that it's been trending the ins and outs of 2024. Um, saving. And she said in her video that saving becomes addictive. And I completely agree. Once you start saving, you don't want to stop. If you're saving for something, tell me if you can relate. If you're saving for something and then you purchase that thing and then your saving dwindles down, even if you don't know what the next thing, even if you don't know what is the next thing you're saving for, you want to keep saving because you seeing your savings account dwindling or at zero is just like, mm -mm, this is not my life. This can't be me. So I want to get into the habit of saving, but also I need to start investing. I know people are buying shares out there. And I feel like that's something I haven't gotten into and I have to look into in 2024. Even if I start with like little, little money, but just starting the habit is what counts. So guys, even if it's like 100 rand, it can go a long way. If you save 100 rand for the whole year, come December, you'll have 1000 rand. And that's not a little money. That's like Christmas lunch for some families. That's like new sneakers, if you can. It's just having that money there and working towards something that you know you can't afford on a once-off purchase unmatched unmatched so i want to save money just in general i just want to have a savings i do already have a savings for a rainy day but i want to build on that number one number two i think this is a, something you need to look into um these are the different savings that i want to have number one just a savings for a rainy day um and then number two i want to have savings at specific shops so um i want to get gift cards the one place i want to get a gift card from is Discam. you can always use stuff from Discam and click so i want to get a like a what do you call it yeah a gift card from one of those shops and keep loading money into it and know that when i want to stock up on makeup or stock up on hair products, I have money in that card and I can just go buy and I don't have to worry about where the money is going to come from. And then secondly, I want to save for December. So I haven't decided on the shop, but if you want to buy like a lot of stuff for December for your family, even if it's gifts or if it's like um, things for Christmas, then go to go to the mall close to your home if they have a general gift card for the entire mall that's always a good idea and get a card for the entire mall and put money monthly on that whether it's like 200 rand 500 rand 1000 rand whatever you can afford put money on that and come december if you need to go to checkers and buy stuff for christmas lunch you know you've got stuff there or if you have to buy gifts you know you've got money on there so, um, or a store that you know is a chain store all over South Africa and you can buy stuff from there, like pick and pay checkers, shop right. So yeah, that's my two cents worth on the saving uh, stuff. And those are the two kind of savings that I want to have for this year. Rainy day savings and a store voucher or a mall voucher savings. But I'm in Joburg, my family's in KZN, so it's not going to be a mall voucher, it's going to be a store voucher. 
probably spa because that's the closest shop um close to home that's the closest um grocery store so yeah that's what i'm going to do and lastly when it comes to the ins and this is one of my priorities of 2024 is just looking put together at all times and putting time and effort into the way i look um I know that I'm not generally a scruffy person, but the harder things tend to get at work, the less I pay attention to my grooming, like shaving legs, like um, shaving my legs, doing my eyebrows, exfoliating, like things like that that are not necessarily necessary, but make me feel good, tend to fall to the wayside. And I want to not lose a grip of that, no matter how hectic my work schedule gets. Because feeling good and looking good makes you perform well in every sphere of your life. And I truly believe that. So you look good, you feel good. And that is one of my mottos in life. And I want to keep a firm grip of that. That is it, guys. Thank you so much for listening in. I hope that these ins and outs have been helpful for you and you have enjoyed this video and you will take and implement some of the tips that I have shared with you today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I love you loads and I will see you on the next video.